Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Straight Talk Vermont Show. My name is Bruce Wilson. I'm executive director of Service Rendered Incorporated. Straight Talk Vermont is one of our programs for, for many, many years. And it's our, our leading cable show, but we also have, a, um, we do some cognitive work with um, Straight Talk Vermont and uh, community work, work with the nonprofits, schools, and uh, other types of entity. Um, so today, I'm very, very excited to have as a guest Charlie Baker from the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission. And first, before you say anything, Charlie, I just want to thank you so much for, for help supporting and sponsoring our fundraiser at the Hotel Vermont, which was very successful. Good. And um, we had a lot of fun. and. And it wouldn't have happened if we at the 11th hour I called you up and, and asked for some support, and you came right through for us. And so thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I appreciate, Glad I appreciate you do. it. So, um, Charlie, why don't you introduce yourself? Why don't you do that for our sure. audience? Yeah, uh, Charlie Baker. I'm the executive director of the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. Glad yes. to be here. And you're located in Winooski, Vermont. Yeah, our offices are in Winooski. Uh, so we moved there probably 10 years ago or so. Yeah. Um, and um, but we serve all of Chittenden County. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, a lot of people probably never heard of the Chittenden County uh, um, Regional Planning um, Commission. And um, so what exactly do you do? Yeah, so we really work for the municipalities in Chittenden County. Um, that's who makes up our board. Uh, regional planning commissions were created in Vermont in the late 60s. Um, we were created by our towns in 1966. The legislature created them across the whole state in 1968. Um, so they've been around 50 plus years. Wow. Um, and, um, and it's really, it's been kind of a broad uh, mandate to provide services to our towns, but also with a particular eye towards um, helping the region, helping our towns develop in the most responsible way possible. Mm. You know, so we spend time on development issues, transportation issues, natural resource issues, um, more recently energy, equity, oh, wow. climate change. Wow, wow. That's a lot, Charlie. Um, energy, equity, and uh, environment. Wow, that, that is, um, especially the environment, Charlie, what's, you know, uh, so are we have in Vermont. How, what do you, how good are we? How good are we uh, in, in protecting the environment? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I th that's a good question, and I think you know Vermont has um, a reputation of being green, right? It's yeah. Green Mountain State, uh, but not just the Green Mountains, but uh, being environmentally responsible, sustainable community. Um, and I think I think that's a well-deserved reputation. You know, mm -hmm. as you look around the country and um, the the laws that we have in place here to protect the environment, um, particularly around Act 250, I think has been a pretty significant thing across the country. It's um, very unique across the country and has been pretty effective at um, you know, protecting Vermont. And and maybe it's also because we're a little bit more remote. Uh, yeah. You know, we're not. You know, we're we're far enough away from Boston and, t and New York and Montreal, uh, but we don't get the, you know, we're not right next door, so we're not right. getting the sprawl right, uh, right into Vermont. Mm -hmm. So um, you represent, uh, as the executive director, uh, Chittenden County, and what are those cities? Yeah, so, uh, well, population-wise, it ranges from Buell's Gore, where there's about 20 people, uh, <laughs> to Burlington, mm -hmm. you know, where there's over 40,000. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pretty diverse, um, you know, I think people around the state think of Chittenden County and they think Burlington. Right, But, exactly. you know, there's Burlington, South Burlington, Burlington Colchester, right. Winooski, yes. Essex, you know, kind of what we uh, call kind of the urbanized part of the county. Um, and there's, you know, probably 110, 120,000 people in kind of the urban part of the county. But then we still have another 40, 50,000 uh, in the more rural part of Chittenden County, uh, which is still mostly rural. Mm -hmm. our, our developed area is only about 15% of the county. So 85% of the county is rural. Um, and that includes, you know, up to Milton, Westford, Underhill, Bolton, uh, and then going south, um, Huntington, uh, Hinesburg, Charlotte are kind of the outer bounds uh, towns. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see you have an incredible um, board and, and uh, alternatives to those alternatives to the Al members. Alternates. Alternatives. Yeah. And, um, and what are their roles? Yeah, so um, we have uh, a board. It um, officially has like 29 people on it. Mm -hmm. um, there is a member and an alternate from each municipality. Um, so Burlington, Winooski, you know, every town has a, a member and an alternate. Uh, and then in addition to that, uh, because we're a federally uh, designated metropolitan planning organization, which kind of brings on some more responsibilities and funding, um, we also have a pretty transportation-centric mm. focus. So VTrans has a seat, and there's also seats for uh, uh, Green Mountain Transit, uh, the railroads, the airport. Wow. They all have uh, non-voting seats on our board. And then we also have some um, just kind of sector-oriented. So there's a, a business seat, uh, a socioeconomic seat, uh, an agriculture seat, and a natural resources seat. Mm. Socioeconomic a seat. Is that like, explain that, who are they, who That's are those typically been somebody um, from like affordable housing oh, organizations right. um, or, um, or United Way. Um, hmm. So actually I do have a seat uh, open there right now uh, for that kind of uh, hmm. position. And, um, and Jesse Bridges from United Way has been the alternate. Oh, that's right. He, oh, Jesse is the alternate? Yeah. <laughs> My good friend Jesse Bridges is funny, he's the alternate being in charge of United Way. but. I, I get it though. Yeah, you know, and it's a lot of work. To some extent, we so, you know kind of look at being some connective tissue, mm -hmm. you know, not just between the municipalities, but also organizations, you know, like like the United Way, uh, the affordable housing uh, uh, nonprofits that we have here, which we have you know a great uh, system of nonprofits for uh, of housing, um, and also like the business community, so uh, the Chamber of Commerce or mm -hmm. uh, GBIC. So we kind of try to be a place where all those groups can talk to each other. Hmm. Yeah, Chamber of Commerce is really getting going there. Um, since uh, I, I think um, Willie, um, Tom Torty and um, Catherine Davis and yep. um, Susan, they're all incredible people working to build that up. And uh, Do you know how many members they have? The Chamber? Yeah. Uh, I'm a member, I should know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I think at some, at some point I heard like 2,500 members. That's a lot. So, yeah, certainly, yeah, I, yeah, go far beyond uh, just Chittenden County. But yeah, so they, they do work with a lot of, uh, you know, businesses all across. I but, doubt. yep. So um, <clears throat> I, I don't know if you said this or not, but um, the cities that you work with, the uh, counties, did you say that you help with the, with the tech, technology too? Or, or you just um, kind of. Uh, you mean like broadband like a or, hub or something? Yeah, like broadband. Um, or you know, we're we've been trying to provide a little bit of support. Um, you know, the broadband issue, I mean, is a real critical issue for people to just have access, sure. you know, to school, to right. jobs, uh, just the economy in general. Um, Chittenden County is fairly well served with broadband right. and internet access, um, but there's still, I think we have about maybe 65,000 households, there's still uh, at least 2,000 or so that mm. have virtually no internet access or, or, or they're still like on dial-up, yeah. you know, oh, like 3-1. Like no, no. Oh no, we don't say dial-up. Yeah, uh, yeah, the good old days, right? Um, well, for, yeah. for many of us, but yeah. for some people are still uh, stuck on that. Um, and so the state uh, created a system um, to invest a lot of the federal dollars coming to expand and improve broadband service, uh, but they're targeting it to communications union districts, which are in most of the rest of the state. We don't have that, so mm. that's still a little bit of a conversation we're having with the legislature about how to um, help these 2,000 households in Chittenden County that have really Chittenden non-existent. County, or, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And what happens is uh, they're not in one place. They're like a little dead end road here, with five houses, a little dead end road there, or maybe some of them aren't even dead ends, but yeah. they're very rural yeah. parts of our county that the providers, mm. it just hasn't been uh, financially worthwhile for them to get to. So there's a good question out there about how, how can we get to those homeowners. Wow. So how do, you, um, how do you work with the, um, so how many uh, regional planning um, commissions is around the state? There's 11 of us around the state. 11. Yeah, so every municipality's in a regional planning commission. Um, we're, we're kind of a mid-sized one. Some of them are only about 10 municipalities. 
Um, other, the largest one is in the Northeast Kingdom, and I think they have 55 municipalities. Are you serious? Yeah. 55, and are they working on the same, on one executive director? Yeah, yeah, we're all, yeah, pretty similar, a board of our municipalities, executive director, staff, um, and we're all pretty similar in our, um, and we really work together in our relationship with state agencies. Uh, so um, we have uh, performance agreements with VTrans, with the Agency of Commerce, with Natural Resources, with Emergency Management, uh, to do uh, various kinds of work for those agencies mm -hmm. wow. and for our towns. Uh, that's that's something else. Um, so, are, do you guys work in like at a like as a chamber together? Uh, tell me what you mean by that. <laughs> well, I mean it's like you know you, you do you got the same mission goals and objectives. I don't know, right? Um, and, you know, so your mission goes and objectives for the uh, uh, Cheney County, is it the same, because you know, you, it's the same principles, or, or um, I guess I'm trying to say, you do, are you doing the same things? Or uh, you mean or, the, or, the, the different regional planning commissions around the state? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say pretty much, um, and partly, um, uh, quite a bit of that is actually mandated by the state. Um, so the state has uh, legislated in statute uh, planning goals, and so we're all, we are all following the same planning goals for the state. Um, you, know, you may have heard uh, reference about smart growth in Vermont, where we talk about um, you know, you know, vibrant center separated by rural countryside, and, and that's in statute, and that's one of the goal statements that um, guides our planning work. Now, so you work with, um, so uh, I know you work with um, our good friend, um, Mara Collins from the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, and I want to thank her for coming to our <laughs> event too. Thanks, Mara. Um, so now, so now it's on the uh, central level, right? Working on the central level with our gov up up top there, because I'm um, the governor. Uh, he has five appointed um, positions on the FH. Uh, oh, on the FH. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about the oh, internal organization yeah. of VHFA, but um, you know, I think they're one of the organizations, and um, definitely I worked with Amora a lot, uh, probably 10 years ago, when we were um, really focused in on some housing issues, and uh, she was really helpful at that, at that time, and continues to be helpful. Um, but she's one of those housing, affordable housing support sure. agencies. You know, there's VHFA, there's now Evernorth, that does more on the development side. She's uh -huh. more on the financing side. Mm -hmm. uh, and then locally, of course, we have Champlain Housing Trust and Cathedral Square and COTS, you know, all really strong organizations that do a lot of good work in our community. Are they, they have, are they on your board? Um, they don't have particular seats on our board. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while, that socio-econ seat I was talking about uh, had somebody from Cathedral Square um, and actually, Thank you for reminding me that I need to reach out to those folks. Yes, that's, that's good. That's all right. That's good because um, um, you got the network and they need to be a part of it. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's got Chitty, what, what's the Chitty Housing and all those individuals on Monte and mm -hmm. Michael Monte and all those individuals and um, <clears throat> Farrell. Up, up, you said the Cathedral. You, you said. Um, the housing, the, the development on North North Avenue, I guess. Oh, the uh, Cambrian Rise that oh, Eric Cameron Farrell Rise did. All, yeah. yeah, he's a private sector developer, yep. but yep. Good guy. Um, yep. Um, so I guess my question is too, since, because um, I thought maybe that because you worked on the central level with like with Mara, with the, uh, um, <clears throat> the housing association, that you might work with uh, Bo Yang as well with the Human Rights Commission. Some, yeah, somewhere. I've been to a couple of her sessions, but um, not specifically, or you know, not maybe. Maybe I should say maybe not as much yet. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe there's more to it's be done. To do right? Yeah, yeah. We did um, just over the last year uh, I hired a consulting team, um, the Creative Discourse Group, uh, to spend some time really doing uh, an assessment of how well we we're doing addressing uh, equity in our community and, and in our organization, uh, and particularly racial equity. Uh, we just got that report uh, right at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, I just reviewed it with my executive committee last night, so uh, we're going to start moving forward with you know implementing those recommendations. So we have a lot of work to do over the next you know I don't know how long it will take uh, to kind of get a good start. Yeah, it forever, doesn't forever stop. Forever and don't stop. It's uh, meant to follow. Huh? Yeah, and the big thing is yeah you know, we we need to do more work there. I think we'll look at. Um, 
kind of a comprehensive way to systematize improving how we address equity, including a staff person, and that, and then maybe we'll get you know committee, uh, maybe representatives on our board and and a representative on other committees because right. we have a number of committees um, that you know do work and make recommendations up to our board. Um, uh, and then we just need to do more engagement and uh, relationship yeah. building in the community in general. Sure, because a lot of these individuals don't need to be on your board. Ex yeah. you say this on some type of committee, whereas that um, to this, how can we help you do what you do? Right? Yep. That's more or less. That's the, that's probably the best way to do this. Go, you know, oh, you the you're the doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief. <laughs> Go ahead and do your thing. Right. We got your support. We can hook you up with um, such and such a person to help you because they do similar or the same thing or they have what you need. And um, and so that's that's probably the best way to do things, you know, when you work on to get others involved and then we'll get everybody on your board because don't really don't <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a quick start right here. So, <laughs> so you know, you know, our board members and people like executive directors, like you and I, like, f um, like for instance, somebody want to learn how to do, like these these floors are so beautiful here in, at the studio. And if somebody like, want to know, wow, how did you get these floors so shiny and beautiful? Um, and then you and I are gonna know. We're gonna say, what well, were you? We, you know, our maintenance person or our person, he comes and he does the, he washed the floors, he scrubbed the floors, and then he had this incredible shine on it, you know? And that's how he get the floors like that. And then you ask the person to do the floors, and they say, well, you know, we wash the floor, we wipe the floor, we shine the floor. But as you come through the door, our heaviest traffic area, I have to go down there with a brush and scrub it up floor to kind of make it blend in with the rest of the floor. So you want to talk to the person who knows. Right. Not necessarily you and I. Right. I'll tell you what it is, but he gonna tell you what it is. Yeah, how, say, how do you get there? How do you get there? So <laughs> so so if you got people to yep. tell you how it is and how to get there, that's all you need. You don't need to be you and I don't really need to know. You just need to know the person who know who knows. Uh, I say that a lot about my job. I, I, there's, I know a little bit about a lot of different things, but at least I know who to ask or or try to know who that's to ask. That's so important. So, I, we could never, in my organization, we could never do it without people like you and the rest of the people in the community yeah. who um, who knows, because um, it just makes more sense than, uh, to just know these people yep. and they'll tell you who, they'll tell yep. you what it is and you stand exactly by right. it and you stand by it yep. and then you get the work done fast, you yep. get it done easily, and so um, so 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 I'm, so that part of it is um, like um, um, going back to. Um, like I'm glad you know John from um, Greenmont Transit. He's on your board, mm -hmm. and um, because uh, he holds up, he holds up, or he he has this program called Jedi, mm -hmm. Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, which yep. I sit on uh, as an advisory to Greenmont Transit yep. and work with the community. And so, so, that, so that's real good that that you guys do that, that you have that connection with him. The thing is that um, everybody. It's kind of weird that um, one time, one one point, that there was nobody doing. You never heard no damn Jedi or diversity, inclusion, mm -hmm. equity. You know no, what? What that mean? You know. And then all of a sudden, like when like when Floyd got killed, you got Black Lives Matter. You know, um, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, they was everybody around the damn world was hiring some type of <laughs> racial justice and you know a kind of Diversity and inclusion directors, mm -hmm. and um, so what do you think about that? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what I think about what you tell me. What you think about it? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, and yeah, um, so yeah, and I think you know, I signed on to the um, you know, racism as a public health emergency a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, right, there's that press conference down there in front of City Hall. Uh, and I think that did spur a lot of organizations. I think at least 30 organizations or so signed on to that. Huh. And that did spur, I think, um, some inward looking efforts from a lot of organizations. Um, yeah, some went out faster and hired somebody, and um, some like us maybe kind of spent more time uh, kind of assessing where we were, and, and now we'll make some of those moves um, uh, to make more direct investments in that work. Um, so, you know, I think. It's been encouraging, 
you know, frankly, um, you know, these issues are not new issues. Um, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Um, but and and I think it was it really struck me uh, probably ten years ago, uh, shortly after I got here, and uh, we were doing a, a big regional planning process. What we called branded as the Ecos Plan, mm -hmm. um, and you know we started looking at some of the disparities, and you know they're stark. Uh, whether it's home ownership or household income, uh, poverty rates, you know, there's, we have uh, real significant disparities in our community and, um, and it doesn't help anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, if, and in fact, I think, um, you know, the reverse is true. If, we're, if we get more equitable, it really helps everybody and it takes pressure off of all kinds of other, you know, assistance and supports we're trying to provide. Um, so uh, there's a lot of work. I think there's a lot of opportunity. I'm, I'm at least optimistically hopeful at the moment um, that all that attention over the last you know year or two um, will result in some positive changes. Um, and you know, in that vein, I was just uh, my attention just got called to some federal direction on this f that came from President Biden last year, which I think I had just barely heard about, but it's called Justice 40 Initiative. Um, where uh, he's asking that 40% of uh, federal investments get targeted towards disadvantaged communities. Um, so the, all the federal agencies are just now, I think, starting to come out with guidance about, mm -hmm. okay, that's interesting, that's a nice idea, how right. do we get there? How do we get there? And so um, I think it should be interesting in these next couple of years to see uh, how that unfolds and how systems change and. Anyway, I'll, I will remain hopeful until proven yeah. otherwise, but. Well, um, share some with you about me. Um, come from South Side Chicago, um, like I was raised in the civil rights with my mother and parents. Took, used to take me to all these, um, um, have, you know, these meetings to help people who look like me be more empowered and, and get some representation on the ideas and investments that we wanted. And uh, so Jesse Jackson and his, his wife, Jackie, and Mary Harold Washington, and all these people used to come by our house all the time. Mm. Uh, and um, I was on the, went to Operation Push, Operation Bread, Basket, SCLC, NAACP, all these meetings with my mother and blah, blah, blah. Um, Moss Marion with um, Elijah Muhammad and these people, and Louis Farrakhan. And um, this is, oh. and so as I came to Vermont, um, of course I've, um, but I'm um, like probably a giant, not better than nobody, of seeing racism and um, injustice. And I probably joined, probably was a part of every little thing that came up you know, through the years. And I've been in Vermont since 1989. And um, so, uh, I don't like Uncommon Alliance. We help, we help create, this is one of the, I think the best things we've done, being, the best things I help do on these, on the, on these um, revisories, is um, we help create um, data, data, data. So now you look on back of your mm -hmm. ticket, you see all these black, white, this, you know, and you know your whatever it is. You know, you oh, you need to see that before because we thought that was not good. And then uh, I was on the um, Vermont State Police, Fair and Prosper Policing. The Governor and Attorney General um, at the time, um, T.J. Donovan, appointed me to be on. Uh, racial justice and these type of things. I sit on a room when this is school district um, anti-racial board advisory. Um, I work with different, the chiefs around the county about, um, you know, uh, community engagement and fair and partial police. And I'll tell you something, <laughs> Charlie. And, and I sit on, um, I, and I sit on um, um, Green Mountain Transit mm -hmm. Justice, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion right. Advisory, and I tell you, I think for right now, the GMT and the Winooski School District, who's coming on real slow, because they taking like they're not taking. They, I, I and I, I tell, I tell them all the time. You need to take the you need to take the powerful steps. You really, you know, what I mean, it's no, it's not, it's not a soft. You're not, you're not trying to be soft walking through the woods to catch a 
finding where the deers are. We, we try to make a point, make some difference and learn, get better and educate individuals. But we need to get that hard, we need to go hard. We need to be boots on the ground. And so I think we're getting tougher now. I'm sitting more, commit, more better, mm -hmm. more committees at the Winnesco School District anti-racism piece because I'm a little, you know, concerned about them. It, they doing a great job. I just, I think they need to do be, be more harder. Yep. Um, GMT Greenmount Transit and the Just Jedi boys doing real good work. They continue to keep going to get better. But I'm telling you, through all those boards and commissions I've been on all through the years I've been here since 1989, <clears throat> to me, ain't really nothing changed. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. that's pitiful. To me, that's. Yeah. I want to use the, I can use the words on my cable on cable show, but it's messed up. I I I, it, I, I, I can't explain how pitiful it is. Mm -hmm. Nobody's changed. Now let me tell you something. You know, I've learned. Like I, I'm getting a little story. So one day I was going around. I take the rides around with the chiefs, police around the county. Just you know, see. I, one time I did it because I wanted to see what the community engagement was. Not because I was on the Vermont State Police, fair and partial policing and community thing, uh, you know, to figure out what their fair and partial policing initiative was. You know, but I, was, I was curious, but I just wanted to know what the community engagement was, because to me that's more important, working with the people who you serve. Mm -hmm. And what they, say, that, what they say, that's what it is, you know what I mean? Pre in theory, and not in theory, but for real, yep. mostly. And, um, and so I was like going through the through the um, police department and doing a tour, da da da. And I asked one police department, um, just I was in the detective bureau, and I just like, ah, let me just ask a damn question. And I said, um, have you have you took the fair and partial policing training? And he said, oh yeah yeah yeah. I said that's good. You know I'm happy. And shit. And I'm like, so what what was it what did it entail? And, you know they gave me you know, a little basic th stuff and um and i said how long did it take you you know he said oh we, we, it took us about an hour i said an hour he said yeah i said how'd you do he said we did it online so he did a fair and partial police training online with our people who, like me they should do like a mm -hmm. uh role play you know what i mean mm -hmm. well, people like me they can understand my why I raise, why black people throw their hands around like this. It's not because we're no worse than the white person who don't do that. We just is because that's how we are, you know what I mean? So that's why a lot of times, and I know this for a fact, because I, I sit on the FDM, I sit on other things, um, is because uh, while we, our charges, like I said, we, normally we should get like a disorderly, not no some simple assault, you know, but they, they feel insulted. So, because we do that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, nah, go, get, get the hell out, you know, instead of disorderly. So that's why some of our charges are higher than others, too. But, um, so I thought, how pitiful is that to say you took the fair and partial police and training and put it on your website and said you did? You know, so I was, reading, I was in my art gallery in the um, University of Mar Art, so wonderful <laughs> gallery. Show up in time, guys. Um, we're about to remodel it. Um, and who walks by well, another chief? Friend I knew forever. Used to be in the Burlington district. Now he's a chief. <laughs> I don't know his name. He, he wouldn't give a damn if I did or didn't. But um, so I was telling him about the same thing I'm telling you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. But that cat that did that department did the one hour training. He said, Bruce, Bruce, we we just we we've got we about to change that because almost all of us take that one hour training. All those police departments, here's a chief telling me this, take that one hour fair and partial policing training online, man. Mm -hmm. Online. And, and I bet them, you don't see, you, t you don't see nobody, or you don't see no, um, you know, like a, a, a black person, like online, you know, like kind of like some cartoonist person. You don't see nothing, just questions and answers. Yeah. You know, how pitiful is that, man? So I don't, they don't count. They don't count. Yeah, I think that's a, a part of the challenge that, that assessment pointed out to us is like, yeah, we're not spending enough time uh, engaging, building relationships, uh, you know, in the communities where we should be uh, to address equity issues. So, yeah, we 
Um, I can't speak to the police no, I, <laughs> the dynamic. I can't but, speak to him either, but yeah. I just know I go but, by what I know. Yeah, and you know, we certainly, there's more we can do. And I think um, one of the areas that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we, uh, you know, talk more about in the community and make some changes and is, is around housing, too, uh, and housing opportunity, you know, um, is our zoning, you know, which is that, is that really uh, getting to the right results or is it, you know, protecting power and class in a way that is, is adding to our inequities? Um, and those are, you know, those will be interesting conversations <laughs> because, uh, you know, and, and it, some of them have bubble, bubbled up in, in some different spots already. You know, we talked about um, allowing, you know, uh, well, some communities have said, you know, we're going to get rid of single family zoning and allow you know, maybe two units on every lot. Like, let's let's allow some increase in density. Uh, and there's been a lot of culture mm -hmm. built up, at least in white America, around right the you know single family house on an acre lot with a white picket fence, right? Like, um, and it's really exclusionary. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not we're not having uh, you know the melting pot that that makes us a healthy community mm -hmm. where we have parts are here and there and segregated. So um, I think that's going to be the opportunity and, you know, tough conversations I think that we'll be having over the coming years about uh, housing policy and zoning in particular. Yeah. And, um, and we've been uh, trying to invest in with our towns uh, over the last few years in, you know, updating zoning to increase density options um, and have more flexibility. And um, I'm, I'm hopeful that that over time starts to make some progress on some of these issues because a lot of it is really about, you know, who are your neighbors? Right. right. I mean, if yeah, we're living next door to each other, that's a totally different relationship. <laughs> you um, said it, Charlie. You said it. So. Because like people who look like me, when um, I've said this more than once, that I don't go to church with you, I don't go to school with you, we don't go to the grocery store, you know, I might see you at the mall or something, uh, you know, hi, bye, I'm your neighbor, hello. But um, so how do you really get to know me or a person like me? You really don't, you got to go by. Uh, primarily stereotypical ways that people learn about people who look like me, POC or BIPOC. Mm -hmm. They learn about us through um, magazines, the TV, media. Yeah. Uh, media. media don't say, look at that nice black guy over there. Da, da, da. They say, look at they live like this, they do this, they lose and they run and that. And then <laughs> they, white people do this, this as many as us, do the same thing, you know. And um, and so in order for people to really understand who people who look like me, they got to really actually know me. Mm -hmm. And then in Vermont, when I came, it was the whitest state in America. I think it was like, yep. the, is it, somebody told me it was the third now. That's, uh, wow, that's a big one. Maybe the second. Second, well, I, think, uh, I don't uh, think it was the third, yeah so. yeah. so anyway, so I get it. It's not necessarily that they um, prejudice anything. It's just that you know, we all have prejudice. But I think it's because of education, they just don't know. And so I think that's a, yeah. That's, yeah. that could be a lot. That, it is a lot to yeah. do with it. Yeah, if you went to school and it's 100% white, it's hard to right. have that. But, but still, if we look going forward, mm -hmm. um, the fastest, uh, you know, Vermont has barely been growing. Most of that's been in Chittenden County, um, and it's but it's people of color, right? We're not we're not our white population isn't really increasing. We're increasing through, sure. uh, you know, we're getting more diverse. That's it. And um, if we're going to have a healthy community and have a healthy economy going forward, we need to be more welcoming and uh, have a better sense of community uh, as opposed to exclusion. So, That's true. Um, so we'll, uh, yeah, anyway, it's, it's been on my mind for sure, and yeah. we'll keep working on it. See, the, the, and so I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful, you know, for probably one of the, um, persons who live in Vermont, one of the longest, you know, in Vermont since 89. But um, I still haven't, um, I still don't believe that uh, black people or people of color or uh, BIPOC will, will get into the, the back room negotiating. Mm. Because it's like um, um, that one hour of training in FIP, fair and partial police, and come on. <laughs> and now you got to, you know, you got to stamp, say that I'm, I'm this way. No, because I don't, I don't see how you can even think about, you think of key words, or key points when you're dealing with a situation, maybe that come to mind when those, that one-hour training, but 
I don't think you're going to use it. I think you're going to use what you've been using. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think uh, because you now um, believe in Black Lives Matter or, you know, all these other different things that we're trying to equity and inclusion and diversity and justice, I think because you might be we're through some programs, that's not going to change that getting me in your back room with you when yeah. you make a deal. Shouldn't be no damn back room, first of all. Right. You know. I think so that's that's really the issue, and I think it's you know how do how do we uh, open up these decision making processes, make them more transparent, but also we need to change the systems, yeah. right? I mean, there's a reason we call it systemic racism. It's kind of embedded, you know, indirectly, and I think you know there's a lot of people that look like me that engage in in their businesses or their practices or on their boards or commissions that don't even realize, you know, like there's probably some racist history of zoning, mm -hmm. you know, back to like the housing thing, sure. right? Like, oh, like what do, what's single family zoning about? Right, Like, exactly. you know, and why do we have ghettos and, and nicer right. high income single family zoning? Well, that's, we zoned it. The zoning, people like me, professional planners supported that right. exclusionary practice. Did that help society? It, it benefited right. white people, yeah. but it didn't benefit yeah. our society broadly. Yeah, yeah that's true. And, and uh, like, um, why would you think of people like me when being the second white or whitest state in America? Why would you think of people like me? Well, it's not that, that you didn't, you know, that you, you well, let's bring Bruce in. You know, why, you know, it's just not part of the thinking. And I think it would be the same way if we were just living in a, like a, like in, in High Park in Chicago was, Hundred thousand people. It's one community. Yeah. So you think about you know. So that's all people who look like me. Probably you know, not really a high park was kind of mixed, but um, um, but still. So you think about bringing those type of people in. But if you're in Vermont and all everybody's white, why would you think about bringing in Bruce Wilson? Mm -hmm. It's just don't come to. It's just, it's just not because you don't want to bring him. You just don't. Yeah. It don't, how, you don't come to brain. It's not part of. the yeah, it's not part of the habits for right. sure, right? Like, right. so yeah, I think that's that's the challenge in front of us is uh, changing some of those habits. And I don't know, I don't believe that's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't. It's, it's so funny because most of all my advisory board members, all my board members, through all all these I have, and um, uh, and all the um, are major developers in the state, and they support my programs, and they do because I know why, because it just makes sense. To support youth programs, support the youth on boards, support getting them to college, support mm -hmm. doing some um, activities, art and music and dance, and get them involved in things other than drugs and alcohol. To support and um, educating them around those issues, and so it just makes sense. And so when they get money for it, they give it to us because that's it. Just makes sense. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's it's not about Bruce's being black, right? It's about it just to make damn yeah, sense. Yeah. He, every time he had an event, he had 300 kids there, or 300, you know, from the coming high school, 800 college students. It makes sense, you know. And um, he has over 50 awards in this program. Something makes sense, you know. Um, and the other people, here's the people, people who support us, developers, and blah, blah, blah. And here's the other people underneath them, which are wonderful people who do what the best they can, and, and they, they don't think of me. Mm -hmm. You know, just like for instance, like the governors, all the governors that I've been since '89, and and mayors too. That well, yeah, they like Bruce. We support your program. I can't say somebody give you money because I'm the governor. I'm the, I can tell them to look out for you, and then and then uh, then they look out for me. I get to sprinkle down if it's something fell through somebody's fingers, because they got to look out for their friends. And there, and I, I mean it. I, I only say what I mean. People can call me on any any time I want them to, you know. Cause, but I, I appreciate everybody for the work they do and whatever. But um, and uh, so yeah, I not get it. You got, you know, you look after your, your friends. It, let's take it for you. If you give me twenty grand, and they don't give it to this person you already gave it to for the last ten years, they somebody's losing a job. That they know of, you know. What I mean, it's hard, you know. It's tough, you know. And uh, they don't care about what the governor said or the mayor said or whoever said, you know. They don't care, cause they gotta look out for the people who they they see the work that they do, you know. So that bothers me, you know. Saying how do I get, how do I get on, you know, how do I, and then we, and then we have youth centers all around the state, mm. or all around the state, man. I want them youth centers all around the state. 
<laughs> Fairhaven, Rutland, you know, free for kids and fountain. They didn't pay a dime. And in, in, in Chinning County, all the malls in Chinning County, and they don't pay a dime. At our galleries, they don't pay nothing. We have youth, still have youth events. I said, Charlie, help us out. You know, we don't have no, I need your help because we ain't got no money to, to mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. I'd use people, I, I ask people like you to help us. And then you come to it and say, damn, this is nice. It's a nice event, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, and so, you know, and, that's, and we have over 50 awards. And so, um, but yet we have no money. But our, if you look at our structure and you look at our malls and things, we have, it's millions and millions of dollars involved in what we do. Millions of dollars. Because people believe that we make the right decision and we really help people, for real. We really help them. You know, I'm a commissioner, I was former commissioner in Winiski. I'm on the, uh, <clears throat> told you I was on the Winiski um, Democratic Party. I'm the chairman of the Winiski School District um, Anti Racism Committee. I created the community justice, one of the founding of community justice around the state. Mm. Da, 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 da. So, you know, this is work that real work yeah, that I don't, I yeah. don't get paid for none of that. I do it because I believe, believe in the work that I do in the people who I serve. And if, and if, I, kept, if I didn't like white people, I wouldn't have been in Vermont since 1989. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, I just get sad about it, Charlie, because uh, here's these people got incredible budgets. And they can't open them. You, our use in is like 7,500 square feet. You know, they, 3, 000, 5, 6, 7, 000 square feet. You know what I'm saying? And it's all free for you. The best stuff in our places because people believe in us. You know what I mean? I, you know, we can't afford it. But people believe in us. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we get it all. And then people got all this money in their budget. And they won't even do nothing like that. They just, we're the ones. You know, why? Why? Why they won't? I don't know. They certainly can afford it, hmm. you know. <laughs> they certainly can afford it. We can't afford it, but we do it. We've been doing it since 2003 in the state. Still going strong. Have a few centers in art galleries and malls. That's great. So, um, so I don't know. I get a little sad about that, Charlie, because yeah. that's why I know that things won't change much, you know, because especially for our youth and families, man. And I work with them on all kind of levels on helping our youth and families, and I work with all the schools and. Nah, nah, nah. It's not about me. It's just, it's, it's just the work that we do. Mm -hmm. We really, really work with, who, with the people who we share, I mean, that we serve. Yeah. We really do. We ain't no, I get the answers from there. Wow. It's this dumb, dumbass thing not to get the answers from me. I have youth advisory boards around the state. Let me tell you something. I, if, <laughs> there's no one to allow a planning event when I have a youth board. It's just, I mean, we plan, <clears throat> before we go, tell them, we got a five minutes. Um, we got, um, Oh, my organization created youth on boards for the city of Burlington in 2003. And they sit on the police commission, planning commission, and all that. You got a youth on your board? We do not. Or, that's, that's all right. We, we just, we're not, we just got through, um, what do you call it, um, uh, revised our resolution for the, that started in 2003 to get youth on more boards in the um, well, planning commission through the city um, of Burlington. Hmm. So we just revised it. So now we're about to do these two incredible events, which I'm going to talk to you about. You've come in the Contours Auditorium, and we're going to do big events like um, understand what youth on a board means, first of all. DJs, you're going to have a, my, youth, my uh, youth coordinator, uh, Avelina, playing this big, like they're going to do like art, they're going to sell their own art now and make money, too. But they're gonna learn about what you've been. Be we're trying to get them excited about being on boards. <laughs> and then we're gonna take it to. I'm working with Phelan Friends, along with people at Echo. And then we're gonna do a gigantic one. Have a commissioner there talking about, like, uh, like uh, Boyang Yang and uh, ACLU and mm -hmm. ADO, um, um, ADOL, the uh, job. What is it? Um, Department of Labor? D Department of Labor. D O. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. I don't know. Thank you. Department of Labor. I, we, they're already committed to it. And <laughs> people don't like to talk about So then that's going to be the big one. We want to get this youth excited about being on boards and committee and commission. And then we're going to act t we're gonna do surveys and get them on. Get them on, get them on these boards for the city of Burlington and any city. I'm going to work with Essence, the city manager there. Turner. And, and um, Milton. Milton. Um, yeah.
We're gonna get you from board to um, work. I got um, with uh, Pamela from Tam Tamla from SS High School, and um, and that we're gonna want, we want you from boards all around, primarily around Sydney County, <laughs> and it's happening. Right. And so you know what? <laughs> we ain't better than nobody, but you should be on everybody's board making decisions on what it should be for them. How can they make a difference? Not us telling them what to do, because everything we do is for them. Mm -hmm. And so, right, right. so we've been doing this since 2003. And people don't know, I don't go around saying all this stuff about all the things we do, <laughs> but um, it's go, um, uh, on our revision of our um, resolution for the city, Brian Pine helped us, been working with us on CEDO. Um Max Tracy, you know, these people uh, were supported, it was signed up by Karen Nodell, Jane, no Jane, doubt. Jane, and um, yeah. um uh, Karen Paul, Karen Paul, Karen Paul, and I forget the uh, um the black girl's name. Um, she's you know, Hightower. She, yeah, Hightower. You know, and um and um Hanson, and uh, so they all signed off on a lot, you know, and so um on our new resolution. And then, so now we're working to get these youth excited about being on boards and committees and commission for the city of Burlington. And it's going to, ha it's happening. And so, great, yeah. ooh, I mean, like. That's yeah, something we should take a look at, too. Yeah, we've got some different well, opportunities. Well, I'm going to ask you about it. All right. should be, yeah. If it can't be nobody, see, and we changed a few things on, the, on our resolution. One thing was, um, at one point when we did in 2003, they couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. they, they, so now they can. Mm -hmm. And, um. And we added more committee boards and committees. Hmm. So they can vote, man. What good does you make any decisions and you can't vote on? But now they can. So we're happy about that. So um, I'm just saying we ain't better than nobody, but this is work that I do. Yeah, it's a good work. I don't, I don't get paid for doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's something I have to do. It's a passion for me to do. And um, you for getting, you for getting better. We see different, our, our, um, our measurements are really, a good, you know what I mean, from um, getting you from boards, committees, jobs, job selling, mentoring, internships. Yeah. You know, that's, great. We, that's what we do. You know, so, and, and um, we don't need no zillion dollar budget. I tell you, all you need to know is the people who know it, like I, we talked about, you know, a doctor, lawyer, and then chief. You got it, bro. That's all you need to know. They, they, they'd be so excited to talk about the work they do, that you've job selling them, intern for them. All kind of cool things, you know. Well, I know for a fact because that, that's what I do. Yeah. So, um, Charlie, come on, close us out. What you got going on? What's coming up? <laughs> what you got? I really I don't know how, to, how I can follow up all that. Uh, well, you ain't got to follow up on that because we we we're a team, bro. Like uh, I say. Yeah. So I I think uh, one thing I'll give a plug for uh, we're having a public meeting on I think it's uh, January 26th that evening. Uh, I think it's 6 p.m. Uh, we're we've been. Uh, kind of looking at what to do around exit 14 mm. um, and just, uh, you know, how that backs up at, you know, peak hours. What the hell is back exit 14? Uh, the Burlington exit on 89. Yeah, I, I, I was going 15, 14. Staples Plaza. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, right, Doubletree. Yeah, 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 gotcha. Right? Um, and um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. We've, we've been kind of taking a look at the interstate, and so, um, mm. but also uh, what can be done to just reduce traffic in general, mm -hmm. so a lot of other uh, different options, you know, bus, bike, walk, uh, anything else, working from home. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we're kind of, we're having a public meeting uh, that evening, so I encourage people to uh, plug into that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, there's, so uh, we have so a lot of other things. Learn, learn yeah, the, please, yeah, check out our website, ccrpcvt.org. Um, and then, you know, we. Each year, we're probably doing like probably about 150 projects around the county. Uh, wow. So, you know, some of them are pretty small. That one's a pretty big one. Um, but, you know, again, ranging from emergency management and you know, preparing for climate change and energy and transportation, land use. So, lots of things going on in, in all, the, all of our municipalities every year. And, um, yeah, feel free to get yeah. in touch anytime. Can you see your website again? Yeah, it's uh, ccrpcvt.org. No doubt about it. And, and they can, uh, people can uh, look at your website and, and they actually um, maybe have some ideas, suggestions they might be ready to enter into. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, please yeah, get in touch. Happy to help. 
Well, thank you, Charlie, for coming on our show. Thank you, sir. Man, and supporting our programs. Art So Wonderful, our art gallery in the University Mall. Come to Art So Wonderful. Our galleries are really nice. We're about to renovate it. It's going to be um, so nice. In the back, we're going to put like another chill out center. It's going to be uh, arts and crafts for youth and families, free, of course, and a recording studio. And um, and so I'm excited to get it going. I'm, I'm, I'm keep. This book was, next week I'm going to start moving some shelves out, start doing stuff. But I wait for my art director to come back, Alondra de la Cuesta, I miss you. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.